Welcome to the ultimate guide to YouTube ad targeting options. In today's video, I'm gonna run you through how to make your first ad and how to set up your first ad group in Google Ads. And even more importantly, I'm gonna run you through all the different targeting options available in Google Ads. In other words, I'm gonna be showing you how to make sure to show your YouTube ad to exactly the right person. Now, targeting can be very important, but it's also kind of complicated if you don't understand it. So make sure you watch this whole video if you haven't set up a Google Ads campaign before to learn how it all works. Works. Now, this is part two of a video in a series of how to set up your first YouTube ad campaign. If you haven't watched the first part, I'm gonna to link to it in the description down below. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so here you see my empty campaign. This campaign will not run until I put some ads into it. So that's gonna be the first step, to make some ad groups and then put some ads into the ad group. So to make an ad group, what you wanna do is either click this create ad group, or if you already have ad groups in the campaign, you'd be clicking this plus button right here. Now, you wanna give your ad groups a name. There are different ways to set up these types of campaigns, and I dive deeper in my book into the different ways to set up campaigns. Some types of campaigns should be set up with one single ad group and one single ad. However, most types of campaigns should be set up with multiple ad groups in your campaign and multiple ads within each ad group. And again, it's very important that you give your campaigns a meaningful name and that you follow a naming convention. So that way you can search by ad group name and so that way you can do the more advanced data analysis techniques that I'm gonna show you in later videos. Okay, so let's dive into how to create the ad group. First step, we make the name. I delete the default name and instead, what I'm gonna do is give it a meaningful name that talks about the targeting within this ad group. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a remarketing ad group first, and I'll explain the reasons for that in a minute. So the type of targeting would be the first part of the ad group name, remarketing. Next, you wanna specify which type of remarketing list that you're using. When you're first starting off, it'll be real simple. You won't have many different types of remarketing lists. But as you get more advanced, you might have customer match remarketing lists. These are lists generated by uploading a spreadsheet of emails to Google of your customers. You might also have YouTube-based remarketing lists for people that watch your YouTube videos. There's all types of remarketing lists that you could create. So for now, I'm gonna make a website remarketing list. So I'm gonna put in this next field here, website. So here's the final part of your ad group name that you wanna make sure to have, the duration of your remarketing list. And here's what I mean by the duration of your remarketing list. So let's say somebody goes to your website the next day or the next two or three days, they're probably still really interested and it's probably worth spending a lot to get them back. But let's say it's been two years since they've been to your website. In that case, it's probably worth a lot less to advertise to that person. They may have forgot about that product, they may have bought from somebody else, and they're probably worth a lot less. For this reason, in my book, I recommend setting up remarketing lists in many different durations and creating separate ad groups to bid on different durations of your remarketing list. So I'll start off with the first one I recommend, the seven day remarketing list. So that's your naming convention right there. Next, put in the demographic targeting. Here you can see all the different options for demographic targeting and it can seem a little bewildering at first. I would say when you're first starting off, just keep it simple. Um, if this was a non-remarketing campaign, I would say make the best guess at what the majority of your customers are. Let's say if the majority of your customers are women over 40, that would be your starting point. Or let's say there is no particular demographic, you could just target all demographics together. For remarketing campaigns, you usually wanna use very broad demographic targeting. You only wanna exclude people that you know will certainly not buy your product. For example, let's say that you were selling an Alzheimer's supplement. You might not wanna target people in their 20s and 30s and teens, because those people don't have Alzheimer's, but you might wanna target people in their 50s and maybe even their 40s and definitely their 60s, because that's really your core demographic. Um, for cold traffic campaigns or non-remarketing campaigns, you wanna go a little more granular, but keep it fairly broad for remarketing campaigns. For the purposes of this example, I'm gonna just show you how to make the demographic targeting matching what's in my campaign name. I deselect unknown, I deselect female, and I deselect 65 plus and the unknown demographics. So now my ads are running only to men between the ages of 18 and 64. 
Now you see a few other options here, parental status and household income. These are more advanced options. I do not recommend that you use these when you make your first campaign. Keep it simple, gender and age. The next step after you select your demographic targeting is you select the audience targeting or the contextual targeting, meaning the type of videos that you want your ad to show up on or the type of person that you want to see your ad. So I'm gonna click on this option here. Okay, so now it's time to select the targeting for your ads. The targeting means which videos your ads will show up on or which type of person your ads will show up to. Now there's many different targeting options in Google Ads. I'm gonna walk you through all of them and then I'm gonna show you which one to choose for your first campaign. So you can see here, there's four different main types of targeting on Google Ads. Audiences, keywords, topics, and placements. Audiences are a method of targeting your ads which is based on the cookies on a user's computer. It's not based on the website that they're going to or the YouTube videos that they're watching. Your ad is targeted to the person regardless of what they're watching and not really targeted to the video. Now, this is really where internet advertising is going because audience targeting is becoming more and more advanced every year. There's a bunch of different audience types. We're gonna dive more into that later on. Keywords are just what it sounds like. You put in a few words describing your product or service or describing the type of video that you want your ads to show up on. Let's say, for example, I wanted to advertise on online marketing videos. I could use keywords like online marketing or digital marketing or make money online or all those kind of keywords would target the type of channels and the type of videos that I'm looking for. The next type of targeting is topic targeting. Topic targeting is where Google categorizes YouTube channels and YouTube videos into certain predefined topics. There's limited options. You can't just type in anything you want like keywords, but the advantage of this is that it makes targeting simple if you do want to target certain channels or certain videos. Let's say, for example, you have a fitness business. A real simple option to start off with is targeting the fitness topic. There's also subtopics within the fitness topic. Let's say you have a yoga business, you could target the yoga subtopic within the fitness topic. The next option is placements. Placements are one of the best options to use when you're first starting off because they're very targeted, very granular. What placements are is you can target your ads to an individual YouTube channel or even individual YouTube videos. Now, I don't recommend targeting individual YouTube videos because even when you're first starting off, you're gonna struggle to spend very much unless you have a massive, massive list of videos. What I recommend instead is targeting your ads to individual YouTube channels. Now, let's go back to our example and say that you have a yoga channel. You could target other yoga channels and you know that the people watching those channels will probably be interested in what you have to sell. So that's a good option, not the one we're gonna use when we first start off though. So let's dive deeper into the audience targeting options right now. Okay, so you can see I'm expanding this out and there's a few different ways to choose your audiences. First of all, you can search for something that you think would be a good audience. Let's say, for example, yoga. I search for that and you can see I have a few suggestions for audiences which might be good for yoga. You can also get ideas. These are based on Google's recommendations for the audiences they think are most likely to convert for you or to work well for you. Now, because this is a totally new account, these are kind of nonsense recommendations. Google has nothing to go off of, so it's just recommending very general audiences. If you are running this account for a while though, these recommendations will eventually become pretty good. So this can be a good source of new targeting to go to this ideas tab. What I want you to do though, is to go to browse. Here you'll see the advanced options to go into every different type of audience. And audience targeting is the main type of targeting on Google Ads, so there's many different types of audience targeting. I'll run you through each of them real quick. First, you have demographic targeting, exact same thing as we went over before, gender, age, household income, parental status, all that good stuff. The next category that we have here is affinity audiences. These are predefined audiences made by Google where you have certain limited options. Affinity audiences are very broad audiences which are good for getting scale. Great for big advertisers, not good for you when you're first starting off because you don't need to spend a huge amount. Custom affinity audiences are similar to affinity audiences, very broad audiences, but the difference is you build these audiences yourself by putting in URLs or apps 
or keywords or other targeting types that construct this audience for you based on what Google knows about the person that's browsing the internet. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated, a little bit more advanced. Again, great for big advertisers, not good for your first campaign. Now, here's the next option, what they're actively researching or planning, and you have a few different events here. So the first option here is in-market audiences. Like affinity audiences, these are predefined audiences that Google made for you. Limited choices, you don't build it yourself. These audiences are smaller. It's tougher to get as much scale as you can with affinity audiences or custom affinity audiences. The advantage though is that in my experience and in the experience of most advertisers, these audiences are usually more profitable. So less scale, but more profitable. This can be a good type of audience to select for one of your later campaigns, maybe your second or third campaign that you make after this one. Not what we're gonna select for this first campaign though. The next option is life events. These are predefined life events that you can put in to target people that are going through a certain change in their life. And on screen right now, you can see a few examples of this. Um, you can target people that just created the business, people that recently graduated from college, changed job, marriage, moving, purchasing a home, all types of life events that you can target. In most situations, this is not gonna be good for one of your first campaigns because these are pretty broad categories. Occasionally, you may find the perfect life event and you may wanna use this for the first campaign if you luck out and have the perfect life event. For example, let's say that you're a wedding planner. In that case, there is a perfect life event for you. If you go into this marriage category, you can see getting married soon is a life event that's in there. So that really makes a lot of sense for you. Most of the time, there isn't a perfect life event though, so most of the time, you don't wanna use that as one of your first targeting options. The next option that you have here is custom intent audiences. These are similar to in-market audiences, but like custom affinity audiences, you build them yourself. You put in the list of keywords and you construct these audiences based on your own keywords. Again, a little more complicated, a little more advanced. You'll get to that eventually, but I don't recommend this for your first campaign. So here's the next category, how they interacted with your business. And you see there's two options here, remarketing audiences and similar audiences. Remarketing audiences will be audiences of people that have visited your website, or once you get a little more advanced, people that have visited your YouTube channel, watched one of your videos, or people's emails that you have uploaded to Google using customer match remarketing. When you first start off, this is basically people that have been to your website. You also see the option for similar audiences here. Similar audiences are people that Google feels are similar to a certain remarketing audience. Let's say I had a remarketing audience of people that visited my website in the last seven days. Google will also make for me a similar audience of people which will give me more people to target who have not been to my website, but which Google thinks are very similar to the people that have been to my website. Again, this can be great eventually, but don't select this for your first campaign. All right, so this last targeting option that we have here is combined audiences. Now, combined audiences are again, a little bit more advanced, a little bit more complex, basically intersections or combinations of different audiences. Don't select that for your first campaign. So you have now gotten a crash course in Google Ads targeting options. You know a little bit about all the different targeting options. And I know it seems overwhelming, but don't worry, we're gonna be keeping it simple for this first campaign. So which targeting option do you wanna use for your first campaign? The targeting option that you always want to use in your first campaign is remarketing. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on this, how they have interacted with your business, and then you wanna click on website visitors. Now, you can see in this dummy account, I haven't set up a bunch of different remarketing lists. If you have built out a bunch of different remarketing lists, you would see all of your lists here. If you haven't set up your remarketing yet, then that's okay. What I want you to do is to click the video in the description where I give you a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial into how to set up your remarketing list. Pretty simple once you know how, you just have to know how to put the code in and set up a few rules, uh, but that's a topic for a different video. Uh, watch that video, set up your remarketing list if you haven't yet. Once you have your remarketing list set, then you wanna select the remarketing list in your ad group name. So for me, this is people that visited my website in the last seven days. So I select that option. So that's my targeting. I don't need any of these other targeting options. You can select multiple targeting options, but that's ninja level. Don't do that for your first campaign. Okay, so next after this, you put in your bid. 
The bid is the maximum amount that you want to spend to get one view. If this was a drive conversions campaign, like I recommend you guys set up, you wouldn't be bidding per view. Instead, you would be bidding per action. What that action is depends on exactly how you set up your conversion tracking and your optimization. The most basic way to set up CPA campaigns or cost per action campaigns is for sales. Let's say you're selling a product that costs $50. A simple way to set that up would be to bid $30 for a sale. So you bid 30 at the most, you make 50, so you have a little profit margin there. Another way to set up these types of campaigns, which I use often myself, is to bid per lead. Let's say that you know because of different analytics in your business, each lead in your business is worth $5. You could bid, say, $2 per lead, and then you could get leads at the maximum price of $2 and then have a good profit margin. So for a CPV campaign, this type of campaign that we're setting up right now, how much should you go in for your starting bid? What I recommend is going in with a starting CPV bid of 25 cents. That's a good medium bid for the United States and Canada, which will usually max out a small budget like $10 a day. Maybe you're not able to spend your entire budget, in that case you can raise your bid, or maybe you spend your, the entire budget right away. In that case, you can lower your bid. This isn't set in stone, you can always change it later. So just start off with 25 cents or something simple that you know will spend the entire campaign budget. So I type in 25 cents here. Now, you can see here there's an option for top content bid adjustment. YouTube categorizes certain content from selected channels as top content, meaning the content on YouTube they think is the best. And you can have the option to bid a little bit extra on this content. This can make sense sometimes, but again, too complicated for your first campaign. Don't use a top content bid adjustment. All right, so I know that's a whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of different targeting options, but that is how you create your first ad group. So you've done it, you made your first ad group, and now it's time to make your ad. Again, I want you to click on this option I'm mousing over right now, skip ad creation advanced. Again, you're advanced now, so this is the appropriate thing for you to do. So I click skip here, and then I save my ad group. At this point, because I selected custom video campaign, I need to choose my campaign creative type. Like I told you before, we're leaving video discovery ads for later, so I choose skippable in-stream ads. These are the ads that interrupt people in their YouTube video player in which you can skip after five seconds. So I save format. This is now an in-stream ad campaign. All right, so I got my ad group, and it's always good once you make your ad group, just to go through, double check your targeting settings, make sure everything's all set. So to double check that, I go to the audiences tab here. And you can see that I have the right audience here. Uh, again, this is a dummy account, there's nothing in this account. If this was a real account, this wouldn't say too small to target on Google properties, and this would show my real remarketing list. So, now it's time to add in your ads. To do that, what I want to do is I want to click on the campaign name. Then I want to click on the ad groups option. And now I'll see a list of all the different ad groups, just one in the case of this campaign. I click on the ad group. And now this is where I'm going to add in my ads. To add in the new ad, as you can see here, you just click the plus tab. And now you have the option to add ads into your ad group. So how do you do this? So the first thing is you're gonna to wanna to paste in the URL of your YouTube video into this field right here. Now, you could take this directly from YouTube, but what I recommend is that you set up a simple spreadsheet like I have right here, and then you just have a list of all your ads just like you're seeing. This will save you a lot of time going back and forth to YouTube, and it'll just help to keep things organized when you have a bunch of ads. So let's say I wanna advertise this first ad, the top five reasons to advertise on YouTube. I copy this. I paste it in right here, and here you can see my ad, the top five reasons to advertise on YouTube. All right, so the next option that you have here is final URL and display URL. Now, the distinction between these two is very important, and I'm about to explain it right now. Final URL is the actual web page that the customer goes to when they click on your ad. Let's say in my case, they go to social response marketing slash something slash something else, a bunch of tracking parameters at the end. Usually this is a very long and complicated URL. Display URL, on the other hand, is what the customer will actually see on their screen when your YouTube ad pops up. 
Usually this will just be the root domain of your site or the first part of your website's name without the slashes, without all that complicated dirty stuff on the end. So just make sure you have that distinction straight in your mind. Final URL is where they go. Display URL is what displays on screen and what the customer sees. So in my case, the final URL that people will be going to is socialresponsemarketing.com slash 15 dash steps for the 15 steps book. Now you can see when I type that in, by default, my display URL is my final URL. You don't wanna accept that default. You wanna make a few changes that I'm about to show you on screen. The first part is everything after the slash here and the slash itself, you wanna delete. Don't show your customers a big dirty URL, just the root domain only or the first part of your domain name. Next, you wanna capitalize the first letter of each word in your display URL. And that's important because it makes your display URL a little bit more readable to the customer, especially because it shows up in very small text on phones and tablets. So you can see how I do this here. Capitalize the S, capitalize the R, and capitalize the M. Now after this, you have the option to put in the call to action. I'm gonna select this box so you can see this option. You always wanna use a call to action on your YouTube ads. And you can see there's two parts to this. First of all, there's the headline. This is the text that displays near the call to action button, not the text on the button itself, but the text above or near the button. The call to action itself is the text that actually displays on your button. So the headline shows up above the button, a little bit longer. Call to action text is actually on the button, a little bit shorter. Okay, so I'll give you an example of a call to action and a headline that I would use. So the headline is 15 characters and you really wanna make sure to maximize those 15 characters. Uh, when you're first starting off, just keep it basic, just a basic description of what's gonna happen when you go to your website. In my case, I'm selling a YouTube ads book. So I put in YouTube ads book. You can see here on screen that's 16 characters and not 15. So I gotta finagle this a little bit and make it YouTube ad book people still kind of get the idea and it fits in the 15 characters. Next, call the action or the button text. In my case, I'm gonna use the text claim book. And you can see that's exactly 10 characters. Uh, I'm gonna release later videos diving a little bit deeper into this topic, but for now, just keep it basic in your first campaign. Okay, so the final few options that you have to select before you're good to start your campaign. So the next option that you see here on screen is add URL options, parentheses advanced. So when I click on that, I see a bunch of different advanced, complicated looking options. This can be useful for advanced advertisers, but you don't need this for your first campaign. The last option that you have here is for your companion banner or call to action. Now, this will only show on computers, so this isn't as important as it used to be, but it still does have some importance. There are two options for your companion banner that shows only on computers. First, you can have the auto-generated call to action. The auto-generated call to action will show the first three videos in the most recently updated playlist from your YouTube channel. This can be a great option for you if you have a really engaged, really built out YouTube channel and you manage that most recently updated playlist to show the best videos. For most people though, you're gonna wanna start with the second option, which is to upload your own image, a 300 by 60 companion banner. On screen now, you can see examples of what the auto-generated call to action looks like, and you can also see examples of what the 300 by 60 companion banner looks like on desktop. Okay, so let's say you're taking my recommendations and you're uploading a 300 by 60 companion banner. And let's also say that you've already made this, you just need to upload it. What you wanna do is select choose file from your computer. Now I've made this file right here just as an example to show you guys. Using your logo is not the best thing to use in 300 by 60 companion banner, but just to walk you guys through the process, this is the placeholder image that I'm using from my client company, My Movies. So I upload this image, you can see it uploading now, and there you go. Um, now that you've done all this, you have the option to preview the ad on mobile and desktop. I'm not gonna do that right here just because this video is getting a little bit long. I encourage you to do that though and just make sure everything is right before you save your ad. Now, final step, the ad name. Again, you wanna give your ad a meaningful name. 
A mistake I've made in the past is giving my ads all different kinds of names so it's difficult to search for them. What you wanna do is have a standardized name in your spreadsheet here. Copy my standardized name. And paste that same name in every time. Then I click Save Ad. And there you go. Set up the first campaign. You can see I have my ad. If I click back here, You can see I have my ad group within the campaign. And if I click on video campaigns and then this campaign option, you can see my campaign there. So that's how it's done. That's how you make your first campaign. Now, I know this seems real complicated. It's a ton of stuff if you're first starting off, but trust me, you're gonna get it. It's gonna become easier and easier. And once you do this, it's just gonna become automatic. Like I said before, you can copy and paste a lot of these campaign settings. You can also copy and paste ad groups and you can copy and paste ads. So you really have to do this work once for the account. Then you just reuse the same type of campaign settings, the same ad groups, same ads over and over and over again. Now, one note about this type of campaign that I had just set up. I recommend setting up remarketing first because remarketing is the most profitable campaign type for nearly all advertisers especially if you're doing it the way I show you in the 15 steps. I always recommend setting up remarketing first. If you already have traffic going to your website, let's say from Facebook or from Instagram or some other source, these remarketing campaigns will start running right away. You'll start running YouTube ads on a small scale to the most targeted possible audience, people that have been to your website in the last seven days. So if that's you, you're golden. This campaign is gonna start running right away. But let's say that you're totally new. You don't have anybody going to your website. In that case, this campaign will not yet run. The reason why I had you set up this campaign first, even so though, is that when you have this campaign set up before you have people going to your website, you'll be positioned to maximize the full value of the traffic that you're buying right from the beginning. Next, I'm gonna show you how to set up a placement or a YouTube channel targeted campaign. That's the next step in what I call the targeting ladder. Once you start buying non-remarketing traffic, you'll have people going to your website and this remarketing campaign will be in position to maximize the full value of those visitors right away. All right, so that's it. That is how it's done to set up your first campaign. Would love to hear what you guys think about this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate it if you could share it with your friends. If you know anyone who's just starting off with YouTube campaigns, send this video to them and I'd really appreciate it a ton. And if you want to learn more about YouTube advertising, I recommend you pick up a copy of my book, The 15 Steps to Profitable YouTube Advertising. In my book, I walk you through how to create campaigns for YouTube ads start to finish. I show you how to make great ad scripts, how to film great ads, how to edit great ads, how to set up your campaigns in Google Ads. And I go far beyond what we did in today's video. I show you the advanced ninja level stuff. I show you how to set up placement targeted campaigns, keyword targeted campaigns, and campaigns for every type of targeting. And I also show you advanced techniques in the book that hardly any advertisers are using. So the book costs $19.95 on Amazon, but through the link in this video, you can get a copy for free. So go to my website and claim your copy of the 15 steps. See you there.